Howdy everybody, welcome back to Norman Nerdum, and I am Red Strider, and today, obviously, I've got my hat on. So what could we possibly be talking about? Obviously, Horizon and American Saga Part 1. That title is a mouthful, I am sorry if that came out weird. The film directed and written by Kevin Costner. Now, this film was very good. I'll get to the review here in just a minute, but before I do, I want you to look left, look right, look up and down. Everything around you has been built by somebody that came before you. And that person and that person who built it for you, everything that was built for them that they have has been built by somebody before them. Such is the legacy of humanity, of human ingenuity, of human expansion. Everything that you see before you was created by somebody else, was developed by somebody else, was planned and the materials gathered by somebody else, erected by somebody else, unless you were one of the few people who built your house with your bare hands, congratulations, absolutely. No tongue in, no tongue in cheek here. Well done. That is really cool. You should be proud of yourself for that. Such is the entirety of, the, uh, the entirety of humanity. The entirety of the human race has come from somebody else, has come from something else, has come from somewhere else. We are not... We are certainly not a set-it-and-forget-it species. We are not a set-it-and-forget-it race. We expand. We, we develop. We build. Things get torn down, and then we build again. Such was also the expansion of the American West. It was no exception there. Now, I want to be very, very clear about something. The meta in this film needs to be discussed before we discuss the film itself. All right? So bear with me for just a second, and I'll get into the film. I'll get into the film here in, 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 in just a second. There is a ridiculous tendency in our current culture, especially education, in television, in movies, in comic books, in everything. This cancerous idea that everything that you have was built by nothing more than slave labor. Now, to be perfectly clear, there are some things that that is indeed true. The shirt that I'm wearing, I don't know if it was made in a Chinese sweatshop or not. I have no way of knowing for sure unless I'm actually there and see that shirt manufactured and sent to me when I buy it. I don't know. There, the history of humanity is coated with blood and gold in equal measure. There is not a single one of us who can say with a straight face, and who, who, I don't think actually anybody would dare say this. Well, actually, there is an, an entire faction that would say this, that would say, you know, if I, were, if I were placed back then, I would not do this. I would be better. I would certainly hide, I would certainly hide Jews in my attic during the Nazi occupation of, you know, Holland or, or, or Austria or anywhere else. I would certainly not own slaves if I was a plantation owner in the South. I would certainly march with the right person or the right thing or the right ideal depending upon the culture that i'm in no you wouldn't and you need to stop lying let's be very very clear history is not there for you to judge history is not there for you to like or dislike history is there for you to to examine to look at with a critical eye even and look at with an admiring eye looking at the kind of people who built the world that you live in now and marvel at their ingenuity and their sacrifices and their pure grit. Because if you were to be placed, if you would have a, a temporal claw come down, pick you up, move you over into the Old West, you would not survive two days. There is a, an insane lack of gratitude for those who came before an insane lack of empathy, an insane lack of admiration for your ancestors, my ancestors, all of our ancestors. Did you realize the clear back from the beginning of humanity, countless generations, countless people came and gone, came and went so that you could exist. You live in a, you are the culmination of generations of breeding, of reproduction, of love, maybe hatred, of conquest of maybe peaceful coexistence you don't know untold untold numbers of people came before you you are here only by their good graces i am only here in this building because the good graces of the people who built it people the people who laid down the concrete the people who put in the studs the people who put up the drywall the people who layered the ceiling the people who who uh who lay down the roof tiles 
I am only in this place because someone else built it. And there is an insane lack of gratitude for that. An insane lack even recognition of that. And there weren't slaves did not build this building. Slaves did not build every aspect of my existence. Slaves did not slaves did not build the uh, the big old skyscraper that's outside my window right now. There were aspects of course of all of humanity of it's coated in blood and gold in equal measure because there were certain because we are all human beings. We are all capable of immense of immense evil and immense good at the same time. The establishment of the American West is no exception. Yes, there were evil white men. Period. End of story. That's a fact. There were evil. Well, I, I want to be. I want to be very clear on my my description of good and evil. There were people who behaved in a way that we would consider evil. They really even considered evil at the time. Let's be honest. Period. End of story. That's a fact. There were also Native Americans that behaved in much the same way. Very savage. With no. With no with absolutely no consideration for human life. Period. End of story. That's a fact. There were also a great many people on the settler side and the Indian side who just wanted to live in peace, who just wanted to live. Period. End of story. End of sentence. That's a fact. We cannot look at a movie like this without acknowledging both the, both the cruelty and the courage of humanity overall. Put aside the noble savage myth that has been suffused in every aspect of entertainment and of education, even our cultural understanding, our cultural appreciation of the foundation of this country. I'm talking specifically the U.S. and even Canada, for God's sake. Even Canada, yeah, and especially even Mexico. The, uh, the entirety of North America, really the entirety of human existence has been characterized by conquest and a desire, for, and a desire to live as you wish and a desire for peace. Now, there, of course, there have been many aspects of culture that, has ex that have expanded into other cultures and overtaken them. Such is history. The Americas will not be around forever. The United States, I guarantee, will not be around forever. I hope to be long dead by the time that happens because I love this country. Same thing in Canada. Canada is not going to last forever. Mexico is not going to last forever. No civilization is going to last forever. Eventually, it will be overtaken by somebody else. It will be destroyed. We, we, everything you see around you might one day be raised to the ground, whether through the ravages of time or war or conquest. It doesn't matter. Everything that you see is going to fade away. But not today. Not today. But such is history. Such is history. And that will never change. Because humanity has remained consistent throughout for as long as we've been recording human history. Humanity is equal, is equal parts evil and ambitious. Equal parts courageous and cruel. And that's what I hope to highlight in this review. Make it absolutely clear that we need to acknowledge that fact. We need to not see the world through these rose-colored glasses. We need to see the world as it is, not as we would like it to be. Ignore everything that you've seen by your by your by your by your moral betters in academia in hollywood even though i'm talking about a hollywood film history is not there for you to for you to judge whether or not something was good or bad we can we can have we can do so to an extent but we cannot say that everything that came before us was evil there was of course mistreatment there was of course exploitation but there was great courage to be found in many of the people that were your ancestors. So let's have a little bit of respect as we go into the review. Now I'm gonna do as I always do. I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give a little bit. I'm gonna give as much as a synopsis as I can, spoiler free. I'm gonna give you a notification that spoilers are gonna happen, and then I'm gonna go into it. That section will be rather short because this is gonna be hard to describe. All right, cool. Okay, now that we're nine minutes into the review, so this film is actually is very very good. I will say right off the bat, do not expect. A full script. Do not, I mean, do not expect a full story. I will say that there are setups and payoffs that you are probably not going to find, because this film is definitely a setup for the pre for the next three chapters that are going to come up. So this is chapter one, obviously, as the title suggests, is Horizon and American Saga Part One. Horizon and American Saga Part Two will release sometime in August. So, what happened in this film? There's a lot here. The, I first want to say up the cin the cinematography is beautiful. It was shot it was shot on location in Utah, I believe, amongst other amongst other places. I, I mean, there's no way. 
but the story takes place in Wyoming and in Montana and in uh, and in the in the and in Arizona, and I believe that's it. <laughs> but I want to be very clear: this film is beautifully shot. Absolutely, Kevin Costner is just showing off. He's just showing off the American West, and he does it in such a deft way that doesn't feel that does it feels natural to the story. This country. This countryside that we're seeing, both in Arizona, again, Wyoming and Montana, they're all, that's all absolutely beautiful, but it holds its share of danger. And Kevin Costner is not shy about depicting that danger. I will say, this movie is quite brutal. It's not as bad as, say, you know, Braveheart. It's not exploitative. It's not, it's not, it does, it's not just a bit much. It's just enough to, to showcase the brutality of the world that, that, we're, that we're in, the characters and the dangers that they all face. In three hours this film is three hours it doesn't feel like three hours there's a lot going on and it's actually really intriguing because the characters are really the characters are really well written for the little time that we get of them there's setups and that's it there's maybe one story that actually pays off and i'll get to that i'll get to that in the spoilers again a short spoiler section everything else is just set up we're establishing our characters we're establishing the situation that they're in and we're at, and we're establishing where they're where they might go next that that's really all I can say about it. So that's it's a, because it feels a little bit incomplete because it is. This is one of this is chapter one of four. Now chapter three has already become begun production and chapter four has been greenlit. So clearly the studio has a say. Clearly the studio has faith in 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 this in how well this is going to do. And it was apparently made with with a pretty reasonable budget. In a world where major Hollywood films like from Disney and Marvel and Star Wars, but I repeat myself. They're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, somewhere up to I'm, I'm hundreds of millions of dollars to where we're getting into the half a billion mark, for God's sake. This movie was not made for that budget. This movie was actually made with a rather modest budget of, of 50 to 100 million dollars. Jeez. Now, I don't know if that also includes uh, part two because they were filmed concurrently. I'm guessing it does. Now, that is a very, that is a very big that's a that's a very wide margin there 50 to 100 million but you see every single cent of it on screen it is beautiful to look at all the actors that they got you've probably seen a lot of them in maybe bit parts here and there they're all great they are not uh, there's not a weak actor in this whole bunch you'd probably see you probably even see a few yellowstone alumni here but there's not a weak actor in the bunch Kevin Costner and his and his cast and his uh, his casting crew have done an excellent job in bringing people in that you immediately are going to like Michael Rooker especially is a is a standout. He's hilarious, and he actually has an Irish accent that's pretty convincing. Uh, another standout is Sienna Miller. You've seen her in the you you saw her in the trailer, who uh, she and her family also sp kind of spoiled by the trailer suffer uh, an incredible loss, and they are and they are you go you grow to fall in love with her and her surviving family members. Again, that's not a, that's not a spoiler. If you've seen the trailer, you know what happens. There is again. Like I said, a lot of characters here, a ton, dozens, in fact. Now, many of them, it, it can be forgiven for forgive for forgetting a lot of their names. I certainly did, uh, and actually, many of them, I'm actually looking, I'm looking at the cast list here just on Wikipedia, and I don't really remember any of their names. But that's not because the characters themselves are forgettable. It's because their names maybe may not be spoken in a very clear manner, or maybe there's not a whole, been a whole lot established. In, there, but there's plenty. There's plenty for them. There's plenty for the these actors to do that makes us love them or hate them. And with that, and with that said, this film does an excellent job of showcasing the cruelty and the courage of Indians and settlers alike. Because remember, I mentioned history is not there for you to love. History is not there for you to like or dislike. It's there for you to look at and for you to and for you to just accept it. There were atrocities committed by settlers, period, end of story. There were atrocities committed by Indians, period, end of story. There were disparate factions even within the peaceful coalitions of, there were, of, the peaceful coalitions of these Indian tribes that wanted war and wanted total destruction, period, end of story. There were people on the settler side who just wanted to live in peace and just wanted to live their lives as they wish, something every human being can relate to, period, end of story. There were disparate factions within those same within those same settler groups that wanted blood that wanted an excuse to indulge the 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 demons of their nature period end of story 
This is not a film that will blink, that will, this is not a film that will shy away from any of the cruelty happening. It, it is, there is scalping, there are shots, there are, there are, uh, summarily, mur summary murder of children and women. Notice I didn't say which side, because they both do. And that is what is worth highlighting in this film. Everybody, every disparate, every disparate element, they all have bad things that they've done. They all have good things that they've done. And the film is not ashamed. The film is, doesn't shy away from highlighting both. And when was the last time we saw that? When was the last time we saw an, an, an Indian raid in Hollywood? Very, I, don't, I really can't remember the last film that, was, that showed that. Because that did happen. But oh, we've seen plenty of we've seen plenty of white men raids on on Indian settlements, which did happen. Again, I am not sugarcoating anything, because again, this film does not does not embrace the noble savage myth that so many in Hollywood and are in academia have embraced. There is no such thing as a noble savage. There is no such thing as an as a people group that whose hands are bloodless. Everybody. Has every every single culture, every single ethnicity, every single skin color, every single country of origin. They we've all humanity does not have clean hands. There's not a single faction of humanity that has clean hands in its expansion whatsoever. Period. End of story. And we need to look at thing. We need to look at history with both a little bit of criticism, so that we don't repeat some of the same atrocities that were committed. But we also need to look at humanity as a whole our history as a whole and emulate the good that was done because there was a lot of good that was done in the west there were a lot of good people that settled the west the reason i'm here in texas is because texas was settled by people with much more grit and much more ambition and much more uh geez toughness than me certainly i could not have settled i could not have settled an untamed land not me. Back then, if I were born back then, absolutely I would, because that's how it works. We are all a product of the culture that you're born into, of the world that you're born into, good and bad, just as they were. Every last human being on this planet has, is in this exact same boat. We are born into a world we did not create. We are born into situations that we, did, that we had no hand in. But it's not up to us to decide what to decide what happened to decide what happened in the past. It's not. We need to look at what happened in the past and be honest about it, so that we don't repeat some of those same mistakes. But again, like I said, repeat the ambition, repeat the goodness, repeat the courage that was that was that was displayed for us in the past. But the courage and the the courage and the cruelty on display in this film, it's hard to judge because I don't know where it ends. There is a lot of setup in this, as I said before. I don't know where it ends, so I can't really judge the story. But I will say, if you're in, just sit back and enjoy it. Don't expect a climax. Do not expect some kind of, uh, do not expect some kind of big, uh, big ending, because it, it's not like that. It ends a lot like Doom Part One. Actually, Doom Part One probably has a more definitive ending than this film does. Now, this film is actually getting a lot of comparison to Doom Part One, where there's a lot of setup. So there's not a whole lot of payoff. This film is all set up, but I actually like these characters because we have Luke Wilson leading a wagon train. We have uh, Kevin Costner on the run, which he does actually doesn't show doesn't show up until maybe about halfway through the film, which is actually I was kind of surprised because this is his baby. He's been working on this since the '80s. He's been wanting to get this done even before Dances with Wolves came out. And we have uh, we have as I mentioned before, Sienna Miller. Her char her character is her name is Francis. Uh, what dealing with the aftermath of an Indian raid on her settlement and the complete eradication of the town that she came from. We also have Jenna Malone's. We also have Jen, Jen, uh, Jenna Malone's character. She's just known as Ellen, who is fleeing from who is fleeing from her past and who it, which is slowly catching up to her. And we also have many characters within the within the wagon train that Luke Wilson is reading that Luke Wilson is leading, that we are going to see them grow and exp grow and expand as characters and get. Maybe a little bit tougher, or maybe a little bit softer-hearted. I don't know. This is gonna. If you ever, if you want a good primer, watch 1883. That that show. I will. I will probably not watch that show again. It was brutal. It was really hard to watch, but it showcased how much grit 
and stick to itiveness it took to make this journey and to be a proper settler of a completely untamed land in the, the, which the entire land wants to kill you in addition to the in, in, addi in addition to the indigenous population this is a good old fashioned western in every sense of the word there are there are actually some really really cool I forgot to mention the indian factions there, there's going to be a couple stories that happen with concurrently with them but it all focuses it all is going to focus on this on this town called horizon this fictional town called horizon which represent which seeming which is seemingly both a literal location and also a symbolic representation of the dreams and aspirations of the people who settled and defended and lived and died there. So I definitely recommend this film. I can't I cannot give it I cannot give it a star rating. I, in terms of story, at least in terms of story, the writing is really good. The characters the writing is really good as far as the characters are concerned. You love them, you like them, you want to see them succeed. Some of them you want to see you want do want to see them dead or you want to see them slapped in the face. There is one story in particular that I thought was re that was really really well done. I'll get to that in spoilers here in, in here in just a second. I would say I cannot I, I would say I can recommend this film. This is not a film for kids. This is not at all a film for kids. It does have some situational nudity in it. It's not sexualized. But it, it it does serve it does serve to set up a character moment later. Uh, there is there are some rather frank uh, frank discussions, frank depictions of life on a life in the in on in the frontier of women making their way making their way in the world, making their money however they can. But if you like westerns, if you like seeing manly men do manly things, if you like seeing awesome women do tough things, then absolutely go see this movie. Absolutely. And in fact, I am actually. If you want to also want to see just beautiful landscapes, beautiful shots of of the American West that honestly belong on a painting, belong on a poster, then 100% you will like this movie. Again, I want to reiterate: do not go into it expecting a complete story. You will not get it. You'll be very disappointed. Just sit back and enjoy it. And this is one of the things I say: turn your brain off, but not really. Just en enjoy enjoy what you're seeing. We will get part two later. And that point, I will judge the writing. But until now, I definitely give it a highly recommend. I think you will enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy the gunfights, the horses, the costuming, uh, Western gun porn. I mean, it is just, it is great. The sound effects are real. The sound effects are fantastic. And the music is amazing. Especially because the music in the trailer stirred my American heart. It made me want to go off. It made me want to stand on top of a cliff and look out and look out pensively on a sunset. I can do that in Texas, and then I'm I'm glad to say that the that the stirring music in the trailer is exactly what we see in this film. This and especially because the Horizon theme that again you hear in the trailer it seems to run concurrently with the concept of Horizon the town. So it is a it is a musical it is a musical rope that ties all of these stories together because they all eventually will converge on Horizon this town that's been that's been built and burned down and rebuilt and burned down and rebuilt and burned down and rebuilt. I think you'll like this movie. Just give it a chance. All right? Cool. All right. So I'm going to get into spoilers here. I'm just going to discuss one aspect of the story I thought was really, really well done. And that'll be it. So if you don't want anything spoiled for you, and trust me, you will want, the, you will want this story to remain unspoiled. All right. Let's go. Okay. So you've seen this in the, you've seen this in the trailer. There is a, uh, there is a sequence. There is, you've seen this in the trailer. There's, there's an Indian raid on a settlement. And it is actually quite brutal. It's actually quite heartbreaking. Like in in uh, it's less violent than 1883, but it is very emotionally stirring. I mean, the, the, there's a lot of children that meet their end. We don't see them die. Thank God, Kevin Costner has way more has way more sense than that. But we do see a lot of women die. We do see a lot of men die. Civilians, people who are on who are unarmed, die at the hands of these Indians. Because that was real. It happened. It did happen. I'm sorry to say, and if many, if any leftist academics are watching this and be, and trying to claim that I'm somehow, I'm somehow uh, claiming manifest destiny, I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying it is unafraid to. Uh, the, the script is unafraid. The film is unafraid to to showcase what really happened in history. Even if it didn't happen that exact way or that exact time, it was still consistent with the in, it, consistent with the the spirit and the historical landscape of it of where of the of the period in time this takes place. So. There is a there is a massive raid on a on on a settlement that takes place in which Santa, Santa Miller and her daughter are the are some of, are some of the only, the last survivors of this town probably about a hundred people only about thirty walk out kind of sad um, but there is a young boy whose name is 
Russell, sorry, I, I, I forgot, who flees, uh, who flees and brings back help from the local from the local military garrison. Um, that's where we are introduced to uh, we're introduced to Lieutenant Gephardt, played by Sam Worthington, and he uh, he and Francis, played by Sienna Miller, kind of strike up a fledgling a fledgling romance. And this is this is year their her, her husband and son have been long dead, so. This is a. It, there's been a, there's been at least a year or two in between where she's just living there and their and their relationship is is uh, coming to is coming uh, coming to fruition. Uh, but Russell flees this massacre. He loses his entire family, and he's got nothing left. So the beginning after so after all the bodies are buried after they they clean up on the after they clean up out the settlement, Russell and again he's this young kid probably maybe 13, 14, if that. Uh, joins up with a posse who are wanting to track down the Apa the Apa specific Apache tribe, which is later revealed to be a specifically violent faction of the local Apache tribe, um, in acting independently of the local chief. He is after their scalps. He is after their blood. He wants them dead. This is it is going. There is going to be retribution meted upon the re meted upon this this Apache faction. The problem is they don't. The problem is so far. The people out for revenge, the people out for justice, I suppose you could say it, do not know that they do not know exactly which dis do not know that the local Apache faction, the lo local Apache tribe has been split. So we have the violent faction have left the peaceful faction and, and to to wage war against the white settlers. So Russell is along for the ride. He is out for blood. He wants revenge. And so eventually at the end of the film, he gets it. So he and the so he and uh, a couple of other and a couple other settlers who have gone along on this venture to bring to bring justice to their dead family to bring justice for their dead family members, they are co-opted and they are outnumbered by a particularly blood for, bloodthirsty group of men, who just want scalps. They don't care who it's from. That's the main distinction, and I love that, because the Apache. You have the peaceful faction, as I mentioned, and then you have the warlike faction, who act more or less independent of each other. The warlike faction leaves, diminishing their numbers and kind of leaving them potentially without a lot of fighting men to go wage war on the white settlers, and we know we know how that story is going to end. But unfortunately, but what is brought up is that what is brought up by the peaceful by the the peaceful chief of the of that Apache tribe is that you're going to bring you're going to bring war and you're going to bring war into our midst. Do they know that we had nothing to do with this? They don't know. They can't possibly know. This is the this is the world. This is the world before. This is the world where the telegraph was just coming into was just coming into play. And there was nothing laid out in the Arizona. There was nothing laid out in the Arizona, in the San Pedro Valley in, in Arizona. There's no way. There's nothing laid out there. You had maybe some letter writing, and maybe some people, some people were literate, some people were not. But it didn't. Ma but it doesn't matter. The fact is, evil was meted upon innocent people, and there was a there was a response to that. However. It's been this has been co-opted instead of a instead of a pursuit of justice. It's been it's co-opted by a by a another faction of settlers and just uh, not not settlers. They're just white men looking looking to spill blood. They're just looking to make money off a bunch of Indian scalps. They don't care who it's from. And Sam Worthington's character sets this up and gives us a warning. Okay, yeah, and gives us a warning to, at the beginning and says, okay, yeah, well. What well, yeah, I suppose this just so happens your your quest for revenge just so happens your quest for justice just so happens to coincide with the fact that you know that Indian that the scalps of Indian men are go for a hundred dollars a head, right? But who's to say which of the, who's to say which which is which? Who's to say there's not there's not going to be women or children in the midst or old people? Who who are you who how exactly is the buyer of these scalps going to know the difference? Very much implying, very much suggesting that there is a there is a there is an absolute risk of evil being meted out on people who do not deserve it. Now remember, Russell is one of the last survivors in his entire family of the entire of the, the, the entire settlement that the in, that the local Apache tribe just burned to the ground, and it's really really sad to have to see this 13, 14 year old kid be put in this position. But by the end of it, a raid has been a raid has been planned by both the by both Russell. And his and his uh, the man who went with him to help him in this venture to help beat out justice for his dead family for the for this village that's been destroyed. Um, 
fallen with this fallen again with this bloodthirsty posse that tracked down a that tracked down with the help of a couple of Indian a couple of other Indians might I add tracked down a settlement of Apache. I don't I don't remember if this is the same warlike faction or not. I don't know. That's the point. They don't they don't know either. They've got no way of knowing because they don't care. They don't care that these people are, these people may or may not be innocent. Doesn't matter to them. A scalp is a scalp, and we're just they're just using that they're just using that quest for justice as a way as as a, a justification for killing anybody around them that they may see. They they're ev they are evil people. So Russell sees from the from from the distance. He is he is late. He is a he is assigned the lookout post while all the other grown men go down and destroy and go down and destroy a village of women and children while the fighting men have all just rode off on their horses way too far in the distance to do anything they waited specifically for the for those fighting men to ride off into the distance and then they attack the village so russell sees himself exactly what's happening he sees this entire village of women and children dead they're being shot they're being killed they're being scalped just as those same maybe maybe those this those the, maybe it's those same people maybe not we don't know probably i don't think it is actually don't think about it uh, i don't think i don't think we see a, a recognizable indian character in there that would uh, that was part of that faction but that's the point he doesn't know the difference nobody does but neither do the indians know the difference between the good white man and the bad white man but that's the generation of conflict that keeps going and going and going and going. It's the cycle of violence that keeps escalating and escalating until eventually one side is going to be completely annihilated and the other is going to be left standing. There's still going to be blood on everybody's hands. Absolutely everybody's hands. And I'm sorry, there's no excuse for killing women and children. Deliberately killing women and children. In war, there is always going to be... There, civilian deaths are always going to be are always going are always going to be a part of the death toll. It's just it's this the nature of war. It's undeserved, it's wrong, and it's horrible, but it's unavoidable. That's why war is should never be anyone's first choice. But when you're specifically targeting women and children, that crosses a line. And I'm glad that this movie is not afraid to showcase that both sides did that specifically. They targeted women and children. They targeted the weaker among them in order to terrify them into submission. But the war but it just kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And Russell realizes this. He sees, the, he sees these teenagers, these, these kids, no older than he is, getting gunned down and killed and, and mutilated in brutal ways. And he collapses. And he is having such a hard time seeing this. And the other man who was there... To help him on his quest for justice, sees what's going on, but they're both powerless to stop it. And and a, and a, and a crew of about a dozen, there's two of them, a grown man and one kid. What are they gonna? What can they do? They're helpless. They are as much a hostage to these bloodthirsty, to these blood, you know, bloodthirsty dirtbags, as anybody else. And they are now implicated in their deaths, even if they didn't participate in it. Russell was just a lookout. He couldn't even kill someone who was gonna kill. Who was about to kill him? But that's but that was I thought was a really beautiful payoff for the writing. It's like, it doesn't matter. This is now going to set in motion all of the violence. This is a microcosm of all the violence that will come naturally of conquest and expansion, because that's how it's always gone. And it's not and not just in America, in the can in in the Canadian territories, in South America, everywhere where there is a conquering force, there is going to be resistance. There is going to be war. There is always going to be conflict and blood and violence. And you know what? That's unavoidable. But that's not to say that any one person is wrong or any one person is right. Sometimes there are sometimes there are there are disparate. Sometimes there are factions that honestly deserve to be conquered. Let's be very, very honest. Not all cultures are indeed created equally. There are aspects of Indian. There are aspects of. I'm, I'm, I'm using the term general. I mean, I'm using. I'm using the term generally of indigenous cultures that did need to go away. There are also aspects of European culture that, that needed to go away. Absolutely. In the words of Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I, it always screws me up. The long the hit the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. We are a much better world now than we have been a hundred years ago. And that's not, that's not, I mean, that's absolutely the case. We're a better world now because we learn to overcome our mistakes. We learn to overcome our shortcomings. 
we learn to choose differently than the people that came before us. But we also learn to choose the same as the people that came before us. Because, again, as I said before, history is written in blood and gold. Eventually, everybody will have blood on their hands, but also everybody will have some... There will be, there will be, good, there will be good found in it. It's just the way it goes. And I applaud this film for being willing to show that, and especially show it in an un such an unflinching manner as seeing a child be the victim of that violence and unwittingly being the perpetrator of it. So I can't wait to see what part two is going to look like. August cannot come soon enough. And part three and four, this is going to be good. This is Kevin Costner's magnum opus, and I cannot wait to see where it ends up. But thank you all for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Please share, please uh, drop a like, and share, and subscribe. All this, if you enjoyed it, leave a comment in this, in the, leave a comment down below if you think that I'm completely off my rocker, or if you completely agree. Let me know what you thought of it. it let me know what you thought of it, and you know we'll have well, a fun discussion. Anyway, y'all, have a good night.